Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Now, if you've followed this channel, you know I normally recommend usually one of two or three different turbos, and I do that by power output. For a guy that's looking at 700 or 750 horsepower or less for your 4.8 or 5.3 or 6.0, normally I would recommend the tried and true GT45 turbo. And for guys wanting more power, like the 1,000 horsepower, 1,100, maybe 1,200 horsepower, it's always an S475, an S480, or maybe something from Viren over there at VS Racing, 78, 75 kind of Gen 2 or next gen stuff, all of that works fine. But given the fact that there are a lot of new turbos out and a lot of new impeller designs, I decided to take a look. Hey, maybe there's something new out there that I would want to recommend and maybe even carry on our site. So we grabbed together about eight different turbos and this is the result. These are the two turbos that we are going to offer at richardholderperformance.com. One you've already seen a video on, that's the GTX 3584 RS Turbo. That's like 800 horsepower and below, super good response, lots of power, a much better combination than the tried and true GT45 because it's way more responsive and it will ultimately make more power. So we're going to relook at that one, but this we're going to compare that one to our new G42 turbo, which is a 1200 horsepower capable turbo, and you can make lots of power if you want to get into the four digit range. We're going to compare the two at the same boost level. We're going to compare back pressure and keep this in mind. I know that we've got an 800 horsepower turbo. We also have a 1200 horsepower turbo, but if we take two of our 800 horsepower turbos, all of a sudden we've got something that will run up to 1600 horsepower. And if we take two of the G42 1200 horsepower turbos, you can make over 2000. But let's go back and look at these. Two. Okay guys, here are the results of running our 5.3 liter naturally aspirated. If we take a look at the description here, we've got our 5.3 liter, it's an L33, it's all aluminum. We put the 799 heads back on it because we'd run it a bunch of times with trick flow heads on it. It had did have BTR springs, it had our low buck truck camshaft. We did replace the factory truck intake manifold that came with the L33 with the Trailblazer SS. We had a 92 millimeter fast throttle body on it. it, had stock coils, but BTR valve covers. We had the West Tech dyno headers on it, you know, open headers and collector extensions. We had the Mazira electric water pump. Obviously we had a Holly HP management system used to dial in the tuning and the basically cammed and Trailblazer SS L33 produced peak of 440 horsepower, 439.5 and 423.5 foot-pounds of torque. Now it's time for some boost. After running the naturally aspirated 5.3 liter, it was time to install the turbo. What we did was we installed our first turbo, the GTX 3584RS, and here's what happened when we started out at low boost. You know, <laughs> not surprising, big power gains. We ran this, this was about uh, eight or nine pounds, and we're already up at uh, 637 horsepower. And then all we did, if you take a look and see, we just started going up in boost and up and boost. And as we're going up and up and boost, we're making more and more power, not surprisingly. A little more boost. And then finally we stopped at, because mostly because we had a, a two bar map sensor on this that allowed us to run right at about 15 pounds, 14.7 pounds, 201 or 202 KPA, where this thing made 801 horsepower. 
and 845 foot pounds of torque. So now that we've run our GTX 3584, let's find out now how much more power or where we can take this G42 turbo. All right, finish running the, 30, the 3584, and now it's time for a swap. Swap till you drop. Time to grab the hot turbo. <laughs> totally awesome. We're using this cooling fan up here. I'll set that up. Aim it at the turbo. Yeah, and just move it back. Then. Yeah, there we go. It's like aimed perfectly. After the GTX 3584 RS turbo up to 800 horsepower, we installed the larger G42 turbo, capable of over 1,000 horsepower. The V-band G42 was installed onto the Y-pipe and run with the same air-to-water intercooler as the GTX 3584. We monitored boost pressure, back pressure, and inlet air temperature for both turbos. Okay guys, after installing the larger G42 turbo, let's take a look. We've got our naturally aspirated 5.3. Here's what happened after we put the G42 on. Same kind of thing, seven-ish or eight-ish pounds, 636 horsepower, 633 foot-pounds. And we did the same thing that we did with a smaller turbo. We just started, we basically just started stepping up and boost. You can see as we're stepping up in boost, obviously more and more power. We'll run one at the at the lower boost level here. Okay, so now we can take a look at the different power levels. We got our NA combination. We got you know. 600, 650, we got over 700, we got over 800. And then at, at one bar of boost, basically right around 15 pounds, 202 kPa, kind of the same that we ran on the GTX 3584, equipped with the larger G42 turbo, which we know is capable of about 1200 horsepower. This thing made 914 horsepower and 905 foot-pounds of torque. So if we want to compare the two, if we get rid of all of these others, so here's a comparison between the two turbos, the GTX 3584 RS, and I'll go ahead and label that. You can see that's the lower of the two. And then the G42 turbo, which is certainly much more powerful and able to support a lot more power. You can see in, in both basically with near 15 pounds of boost, the smaller turbo made a little over 800 and the larger turbo made like 913. So the larger turbo definitely did make more power at this boost level, which tells us a couple of things. One, that this smaller turbo is doing what it's supposed to. It's much more responsive and it's designed to make power, let's say 800 or 850 horsepower and less. And that the larger turbo is really coming into its own, making more and more power on the top. And this thing would continue to go up as we ran 15, 20, maybe 25 pounds, depending depending on how far we could push this thing. The turbo should get up to about 1150 or 1200 horsepower on this combination and make lots of power. That's why I always tell you, hey, let's pick the turbo for the power output that you want. You want something that's less than 800 horsepower? Pick the small turbo, much better combination, much more responsive. You want something that's going into the four digit power level? Pick the bigger turbo. Okay guys, you might be asking yourself, why did one of the turbos, the bigger G42, make more power at the same boost than the smaller GTX 3584 RS? And this is one of the reasons, because obviously one of the turbos has more back pressure than the other. I'll go ahead and label these, but obviously the one with the more back pressure is the smaller of the two turbos. I'll go ahead and show you on these graphs, which are back pressure graphs for each one of the turbos, I'll show you what the attending boost pressure was, because this is very important to understand. It's something a lot of guys don't get. If we take a look at the back pressure on the GT35 RS turbo, we see that out at the horsepower peak or out at the maximum RPM, it had basically a two to one back pressure. It had about 15 pounds of boost and almost 30 pounds, 29.9 pounds of back pressure. So we would call that a two to one. But it also had 
roughly 15 pounds of boost, 14.8 or 14.9 pounds of boost, down here at the load in of 3,500 or 3,400 RPM, where it only had 17 pounds of back pressure. So it does 1.1 or 1.2 boost pressure to back pressure. So it doesn't have two to one all the way through, only at out at the maximum RPM. We have a rising back pressure curve, even though we had a relatively flat boost pressure curve. Same thing on the larger G42 turbo. It had much less back pressure. We saw a peak of 18.7 pounds of back pressure, where this thing started out at 12.1. So it rose from 12.1 to 18.7 and still roughly had the same kind of boost pressure. The boost pressure was fairly constant right at 200 or 201 kPa, which is, you know, 14.7 to 15 pounds of boost all the way through the curve here. But again, a rising back pressure curve. And it just goes to show you, hey, look, what is your back pressure? Well, at what RPM is my back pressure? You can see though, one of them, a lot more back pressure than the other, a lot more responsive. Obviously it made less power per pound of boost. And this is why one of the reasons the bigger turbo made like almost or a little more than a hundred horsepower more than the smaller one. Our Older, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.